Dear friends, welcome to Zambia. My name is Violet Kampamba and I would like to take you on a short journey through our beloved country called Zambia. Zambia is a landlocked country. We are approximately 13 million belonging to 73 tribes with more or less the same number of languages. But English is our official language. We have so much sun that other countries know us as Zambia in the sun or Zambia the real Africa. We have most glorious sunsets, so many friendly people. We have hundreds of years old traditions. Big and small lakes and rivers are our real pride, surrounded with many beautiful mystic legends. Look at some of our waterfalls. Do you know Victoria Falls, the smoke that thunders? They say that this is one of the seven wonders of the world that is 1,708 meters wide and 107 meters high and is on the mighty Zambezi River of which even Zambia derives her name. We have over other 20 big waterfalls, 19 national parks where you still can see zebras, giraffes, elephants, lions, leopards, cheetahs, gracious antelopes, birds, snakes, crocodiles, monkeys all over. Oh yes, animals of your exotic dreams. We have plenty of copper mines especially in our province called Copper Belt, which says it all. Our mine's chimneys that are pointing so high to the sky, fuming their smoke even higher, and so pollute not only our environment, but mostly our lives. Because we sweat hundreds of meters below the ground. Dig out that copper, cobalt, gold ore. But when it is clean and sold, we don't know where the money goes. And so it makes our lives even more difficult. And our tomorrow even more uncertain because our young generation's education is being jeopardized with recession, poverty, corruption, political antagonism. We are very rich in our traditions, beautiful landscape, happy and peaceful people. So far, we do not know what a war means to our land, but still look how the majority live. These are some of the realities in our life. Let's go into our compounds and some of our villages. During the rainy season, we have lakes even on our roads. <laughs> While in the dry season, our roads are like newly plowed fields. Our compound life is quite tough, especially for children. It is not easy because too many have to take care of themselves.
If we want to play, we have to make our own toys. We have no money to buy them. Boys make their footballs out of plastic that make them very happy at any time, at any place. While we girls find our own ways how to play. In schools, we are sometimes 50, 60 or even more children in one class. While many of our friends have to study under the trees or in other shelters. We have no problem as long as we can go to school. We also have community schools because there are not enough places in government schools. Selling nearly 1 million metric tons of copper and having 36% of illiteracy in the modern computerized world is not a joke. Do you know that over 10% of Zambian children are orphans? HIV and AIDS has hit us tough. It has become a pandemic. We are getting so used to funerals that we may run out of tears. One can't cry forever. We try our best to go through thick and thin together as a community. Even if sometimes eating only once a day, usually some wali, which is our daily food with some vegetables. Many, despite being with us, do not know us because they don't live with us. But there are those who are taken from among us and are living with us and are helping us in our daily struggles. These are our Franciscan friars who came among us in 1931 and never left us since. Here is Father Patrick, the Minister Provincial, who may tell you about Franciscan way of life in Zambia while I show you what they do. We belong to the larger group of the Order of Friars Minor Convention, a religious institution in the Catholic Church, founded about 800 years ago by St. Francis of Assisi himself. The order has since spread to all the continents in the world. In Africa, the pioneer missionaries first arrived actually in Zambia about eight years ago, led by uh, the first bishop, Francis Massieri. And they settled in a small mining town called Ndola, actually at uh, Buana Mkubwa, the place is called. And it is from this place where the evangelization of the present Catholic diocese of Ndola and uh, Catholic diocese of Solwezi actually began by the friars themselves. The Franciscan missionaries continued to come to Zambia from all parts of the world, but mostly from Italy, Poland, and USA. They dedicated themselves to pastoral and social services aimed at promoting spiritual and social welfare of the people of Zambia. In 1958, the first Zambian Franciscan, Father John Katongo, now in his 90s, was ordained as a priest. I was, I was accepted in the order in 1954. was sent to Rome, rather, rather to Assisi for a novitiate. Then after novitiate, I stayed in the college to complete my theology. And then afterwards, 1958, I was ordained priest. We all depend on, on the trust we have in you. So if you can help in some way, we thank you very much. God bless you. Going through many trials and tribulations in the formation of young people who wished to become Franciscans bore some fruits in the late 1970s when a regular inflow of new candidates was slowly setting down. Consequently to these efforts, in 2000, the mission of Zambia had enough local vocations and so became the first province in Africa. Currently, 
The province has 87 friars in final vows, working in Zambia and in the new mission of Malawi. Thanks to God, nowadays there are many young people coming forth to join us. For the last five years, 20 friars have been ordained as priests. The pastoral ministries and activities of the friars in the province are multiple as per real needs of communities where we have established our monasteries. We have 18 parishes in three dioceses of Zambia and one in Malawi. About half of these are situated in rural areas with hundreds of outstations. Some of them are in most remote and not easily accessible. In such places, the priest becomes not only a preacher, but also a medical officer, transport manager, and provider of basic necessities. Retreat houses. Retreat houses are in all our rural missions for lay apostolate groups of the surrounding parishes and nearby towns. More significant places for retreats are Atibenga and St. Joseph missions. St. Francis at Itimpi and Assisi House in Lusaka are places for the priests and sisters for more direct guided retreats. Mission Press Mission Press continues to be for 41 years the largest and the best evangelization and social empowerment apostolate not only to the province but in Zambia as such. Being one unit with audio and video studios, it gives employment to over 80 local people. Mission Press is ecumenically orientated where all the Christian denominations find their home in it. With our magazines such as Ichengelo for Bemba Speaking Populace, Speak Out for the Youth and the Challenge for the Intellectuals, we keep even the government on its toes to strive for better social equality and wealth distribution of the nation. Twikatane. Twikatane Carpentry and Tailoring Training Center has been in operation for the past 20 years and has made a significant contribution to the social well-being of thousands of youth in this country through empowerment with life skills such as carpentry, tailoring and design. At the end of a two-year course, each student does not just get a diploma but also a hand-driven sewing machine or for the carpentry course a set of hand tools for them to continue helping themselves. To these programs are added computer and information technology with the internet facilities that are also helping the project towards its better self-sustainable efforts. Kobe Skills Center Kobe Skills Center is a recently initiated project in response to the fast-growing mining town of Solwezi with the corresponding population of youth in need of skills such as computer literacy in order to be considered for employment.
Education Sector Education sector is a fast-growing apostolate of friars in the province. Six friars have been trained as teachers. Four are formally employed by the government and are actively involved in the teaching ministry. Little Daniel in Dwansha is a good example of being with the most vulnerable kids in the society in their basic education. St. Francis Community School St. Francis Community School has been initiated as a dream that came true through Brother Tony Draw and Father June Pa Cummings to educate orphans and poor children. When people learned that um, they, um, it was for orphans under... and uh, then we built the, the labs and uh, then we built the assembly hall and we were already at grade 12. But we were still a community school. The government has a program called grant aid whereby they will pay all the teachers but the school remains under the administration of the Franciscan Friars. It's the only school, a secondary school in Ganaton and that area, Itimpi, that side. So it has given a lot of hope to children who come from Ichimpe, Sabina, Chimwemwe. And so now, right now, a big, big uh, accomplishment or a big challenge that we have is building teachers' houses. Formation. We are grateful to the Lord to call many young people to his vineyard as the harvest is big but laborers are few. At present, there are three well-established formation houses for forming those who are called to follow Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Joseph's Mission. Franciscan Formation House at St. Joseph's Mission is currently being run by two young friars. The program is called Postulancy. As there is always shortage of funds for formation, the friars are struggling towards self-sustainability through various self-supporting initiatives such as garden, poultry, piggery, cattle, fish ponds. There are currently 20 postulants in this program. St. Damiano Novichet. St. Damiano Novichet in Indola is the next stage of formation of our young people who want to become Franciscans. In this program, young men learn about our prayer life regulations of the Franciscan way of life and Bible study. The novitiate program lasts for a period of one year before they are officially admitted to the order through the profession of religious vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience as prescribed by our way of life. Due to the intensity of the training, this institution survives mostly on donations. This year, there are 18 novices from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. St. Bonaventure College in Lusaka is the institute where our students proceed for the three years degree program in philosophy. The college that was inaugurated in 1992 and is the only place in the whole world where the three Franciscan families, OFMs, Capuchins, and conventions live within the same compound, studying, working, and praying together. The young brothers come from all over the continent to study together in the context of a very enriching intercultural environment. Our residence was initially meant to accommodate about 25 students, but over the years, the number has increased to the present 54 students, prompting the urgent need to extend the hostels. 
The project, which was initiated in June 2011, is estimated to cost over 300,000 US dollars. Various fundraising initiatives have been taken up, yet only about half has been raised so far. After three years, the brothers graduate and then proceed to Nairobi for their four-year theological studies, which is the final stage of training for priesthood. Once ordained, these are the brothers who take up the leadership and the administrative roles of the province. With such growth and your help, we hope to be able to thank our parent continents that brought us to Christ through the spirit of St. Francis by sending some of our friars as missionaries to you. The work being done by the friars in Zambia is very much admired and appreciated. There have been many invitations by various bishops to extend our ministry to their dioceses. We have already opened our mission in the neighboring Malawi that was initiated and is managed by the Zambian friars and resources. Despite being faced with many challenges such as lack of transportation and self-supporting projects, poor states of the friary, outstations and schools under their care, they happily continue to work in the spirit of humility of St. Francis. We have been also invited to open another house in the capital, Lilongwe. Other pending invitations in Zambia are from the dioceses of Chipata and Kasama. Another invitation is from the newly established diocese of Karonga in Malawi. I hope you have had a good visit with me around Zambia, around the province, and you have met the friars in their particular places of ministry. I thank you most sincerely for journeying with us, with the province of Zambia, with the friars in Zambia. Thank you to you all who have visited Zambia. Thank you to all of you who have contributed to the different activities of the friars here in Zambia. I want to invite those of you who have not yet visited to come along. May God bless you through the intercessions of St. Francis of Assisi. I wish you peace and goodness.